somebody that was opening up for him and couldn't make it, was sick, was killed, you know, just couldn't be there. And so the guy that ran the Guthrie things said, uh, geez, you know, uh, is there any way that, you know, you could play longer? He says, he says, well, what's my contract say? And he said, well, 145 minutes in. He says, but is there any way you could play longer? He says, do you mean like 46? <laughs> so Chuck Berry did not 
play an additional. So then, and then when I was doing the, the tour with, or the publicity tour with, with the captain and Tennille, and I was flying them to New York to do this stuff, and the the lady, their manager, I can't remember her name, said, "Okay, and these are these are the things that they'll require. They'll require first class tickets for themselves, you know, and then you know Dawn Musgrave, their personal assistant, she can fly class first you know, coach, and then we will need." Two adjoining suites for the captain and Tennille, and then another one for Don. And I'm going, adjoining suites? She said, don't ask. <laughs> and so, there I am. <laughs> I, got to, I did exactly yeah. what I was told. They, they just ended up getting divorced last year. The, I don't know. I don't know the exact details of that. Is that she filed for separation? The last I heard, because I'm in kind of a internet group of of yappers, you know. Uh -huh. And and, uh, and did you know that Dawn did this? And did you know that? You know? And so they were talking about this, and the rumor was, and was that. She filed for the separation or divorce for medical reasons. Like if, if for some reason if they weren't married, I honestly I'm gonna just go off. I don't recall, but somebody said that it that it wasn't necessarily involved that they didn't like each other, that love didn't keep them together, uh, or or that a muskrat was involved. Uh, but then on the other hand, then there's another thread going, yeah, he's he's really a bastard girl. She's really a diva. And, uh, I can't believe they've lasted this long. When, uh, and I can tell you, in dealing with them, uh, Daryl Dragon was just Mr. Laid, breath, laid back. Hey, how are you doing? You, know, you got, we got that album out with you? Do what you can, man. And Tony would call me every day and go, yeah, I, uh, I heard that there's a store down in Tulsa that doesn't have the album. You know, and I'm a publicity marketing guy. I can't affect that. And really, it's up to them to decide whether they want to bring the album in or not or whatever. I, I, nobody can force them. And I tried to say that very nicely. But nonetheless, I get three or four phone calls a day going, yeah, Bill, this is Tony. This is Tony. Yeah. I just heard, you know, oh, God. <laughs> oh, and then on the other hand, there's Chubby Checker. Chubby Checker. You know, he would, uh, we had his, before his Cameo Parkway stuff, We he did re-records with us on our Dominion label because the Cameo Parkway stuff couldn't be released on D, on D, 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 D CD. Uh, couldn't be, and so he re recorded with us, and we sold crap of the Chubby Checker's Greatest Hits, and it was re-records of the twists, and it sounded very, very much like them. And he would do in-stores with us, and we would do things, etc. And I did an in-store with him up in uh, St. Cloud. Man, there were 400, there was like a, 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 li a line about a block long when we got there. And we got in there, and, and the deal was <laughs> that he would s sign from 10 to 12 or 10 to 11. And at 11 o'clock, he, they, you know, that line had gone through twice, and there was an equal or greater line, you know, so I go, Chubby, you know, you need, you know, should we be all going? He goes, hell no, hell no. And so he sat there and he signed, and, you know, and just Mr. Personable and Mr. Da -da -da -da. And I don't know how many records we sold that day. I mean, it was just a ton. You know, and this was this was in the 90s. This wasn't in the 60s. You know. And and then finally he turned to me and said, "We're going." And so we just left. And so we were walking out to the parking lot, and the deal. And he was signing as we were walking to the car. And then he was signing out the window as we were like driving away, and people were running, etc. And people heard about the in store. And so my sales guy said, well, 
would Chuck E. Checker do an in-store for me? You know, and I said, well, sure, I, I, I'll ask him. You know, so I call up, and uh, a lot of times I talk to his manager, uh, and and his man. I said, you know, we've got a, an account in, you know, Seymour, Indiana. You know, and they want to bring Chubby in, and he'd go, he'd come back. He said, I'll talk to Chubby. And he comes, calls back, and says, uh, Yeah, I talked to Chubby, and he's open that week. He says he'll, he you know, because he lives like in Philadelphia, that area. He says. He'll just drive. He says he'll just drive from from his place to this place in Seymour. And he says, "Do you think you guys could pick up his his, his gas?" You know. And I, I said, "Well, certainly." He said, and then like maybe if it's too long, he might like stay overnight, like in a budget six or something like that, or a budget five. I said, "Well, God, yes. You know, send me the bill. You know, and." And then another, somebody wanted to do a request, and he was on the road, and they were playing like in Charlotte, North Carolina, and after, <coughs> after the gig, they dropped him off at a, at a, 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 you know, an airport somewhere in North Carolina, and then he flew through the night and ended up in like Memphis, and then got a little thing to Keokuk or whatever like that, and then the guy picked him up, and I said, well, you know, and then he did the thing, and then he flew back, and then he flew to meet, <laughs> to meet them, like in Columbus, where they were playing the next night. And I said, well, how much does he want for this? He says, well, could you just pick up his, well, you know, he's, you know he, he should probably pick up his, his, air, his airfare. I can do that. <laughs> so some of those guys are really nice. Quick question for you. You ever, you ever play down with cross? I haven't. I think I played down there with Thunder Tree back in the 70s. And I and I attended a Marshall Tucker gig at the Armory of the Cross once. The, uh, the freight house, the freight house out here would uh, love you. It's uh, I'm sure. I'm sure they would. <laughs> it's, it's a great prime rib in Crab Lake house. Uh, historic, beautiful place. It, uh, I'll send out some feelers. Maybe I can get a crab leg up. I, I don't get there that much. I went to Milwaukee. I flew up here from Milwaukee just for a few days to do some work. But I got relatives that went there. And then when I go there, I stop to eat. In fact, I know there's a guy I know down there. His name is Ralph Heath, who runs Ovation Marketing. And uh, I know people there, but I haven't played there yet. Huh? 